are joined. <laughs> and this guy right here, he has unfortunately seen me in the green and go running up and yeah, down the sidelines. But right. great coach, great player as How well. Been? Matt, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm not I'm not dead yet. So things are looking up for me. <laughs> All right. Okay. One of my favorites, uh, Matt Millen joins us uh on the ticket. And Matthew, it it it's such a big day. Um and it brings me joy to see you in it because it just it, there's more wisdom at the table uh, when Matthew sits down with us every year. And it's wow. greatly appreciated. I've um, I've said this publicly that Matthew was always kind. Uh, the crew of, of of Doc Walker, Tony McGee, Gary Clark, and those crews, and Matthew <laughs> and that group. Those were some dandies. Now let me tell you, okay. <laughs> those were some great days in D.C. Of course, Adam uh, and I shared that D.C. Mm-hmm. connection as well, um, but. We were talking about the bigness of this day. Yeah. That the Big Ten Conference is doing a thing. And when USC and UCLA walk in the door, it changes the conversation. It changes the, the perspective. It changes the reach. It changes the color of this thing. Yeah. This is a historical day for the Big Ten Conference. Yeah. It's been, and don't forget Oregon. And yeah. that's, yeah. and that's, yeah. uh, I mean, so now you're stretching uh, sideline to sideline, right? Yeah. So you're playing the whole gamut. Yeah. yeah. And so when that happens, you're going to get the the talent that, uh, you know, USC, even though their talent may be down a little bit now, they still have some really good players on that team. UCLA is usually the same way. Oregon's usually packed. So it's interesting to watch these three, and it just kind of it just kind of kicks this whole this whole conference up. What are the What are the big stories for you? Like in, in looking at the Big Ten, and I I found it interesting yesterday that in any other universe. The defending, reigning defender national champion Michigan Wolverines are on the marquee and the story. Except this year in the Big Ten Conference, maybe not. Like, they're third or fourth billing, and I'm not sure why. Well, it's why is because they have newer guys that nobody really knows what they're capable of, right? And so we we go through that every year. Yep. And then after about week four, you go, hey, hey, hold on a second. These guys can play. Right. Now they're going to be good players. Don't get me wrong. There's, and they may be exceptional players. And when that happens, that's when you start taking a good another good look at Michigan. I think the difference, though, is there's there's a new you got a new toy in the box, right? And we got you got a few of them. And so I think what's interesting to watch is the the uh, the reputation of the Big Ten has always been big and physical and get after them and. You know, it's going to have lousy weather in those some of these places, and yep. you're going to have to run the football, and you're going to have to defend the football. Mm-hmm. And um, out west, it doesn't work that way. Now, they can, they're can they capable of it, but you're going to have to see them do it week in and week out. Like, you're going to get some West Coast teams, you know, in in New Jersey in, in uh, November, and you're going to have to – you're going to have to perform, so – and there's going to be there's a lot of travel involved too, and I think that gets underrated, don't you think so? Yeah, I was just about to ask you about that because looking at it as a coach, um, I'm like, all right, I got to tell my players, look, you got to get X amount of hours of rest. You know, I make sure our practice schedule is going to be adjusted to when we got to go to play Rutgers or Maryland, things of that nature. Right. You know, this just that mindset because I know as NFL players, once we got, you know, once I got in the league, I know Adam too, he could speak on this in terms of where we were at. I was in Seattle. And I remember a few times we played Miami. Mm -hmm. And then actually it was one time we played, even though we're actually when I was in Green Bay, we had to come West Coast back to back weeks. So we ended up just staying a a whole two weeks here. And we were on the opposite end when I was in L.A. Right. So we were you go back to Philly, come back. And then the next week you go to Washington or Miami or whoever it is on the other side. It's a pain in the rear, but it was different coming west to east as it going yeah time, to east yeah, time to change that way is better yeah. so before before you jump in adam i want to ask this thing because we talk about michigan being the national champion all the new entries but the silent creeper that i think has every opportunity to just shake up this entire big 10 season are your boys from from penn state yeah you have a better feel for it than i do yeah when I want, when I look at the Penn State roster, I don't see. The first thing I look at in every team when you're breaking down tape, you probably do the same thing. I, you always start up front. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and so game. when I look Games at the, yeah, especially now. Yeah. You know? And so when I look at Penn State's uh, offensive line, I, I hesitate a little bit. They're always going to have good skill people, um, and it's the third year for that quarterback, so 
he should be able to take another step. They're always going to have solid receivers, and they do. Um, but it's the other side. And so um, that offensive line's got to be – and it's not easy. It's not easy to grow them or develop them. No. It's, I mean, with transfer – and uh, NIL is kind of an acceleration pot, yeah. you know, when they know that a coach knows in the back of their mind if the player is not happy in terms of snaps, in terms of gameplay, what he has or didn't have, get, he might be gone because he feels that he's not wanted here or whatever. So that's the part of where you're talking about the development doesn't quite get where it needs to be sometimes. Th- that, to me, that blows my mind. Yeah, how that is now. Yeah. From your time, yeah. definitely from our time, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, we didn't have that option. Think about that. You had to write it out. <laughs> how different it is. I man. don't get that. How different college football is entirely. <laughs> yeah, so, like he's, it's an adjustment, man. Said, they it's may right. leave. I'm like, you may leave. I, we would have beat their ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and how I and how I, how I talk about it is that now it's just like another part of, like, a strategy, right? If in the I sport, guess. in our sport, right? If it was, if it, so, just like when you know the air game became popular again, well, it's like that adjustment. Okay, now we got this transfer portal, so we got to bring a GM in and, and more area scouts mm-hmm. to make sure we can cover all those talents. You just, you just mentioned something that I've been talking about for years. You and I have talked about it, yeah. Derek. Is um, the NCAA is slowly but surely creeping right into the nfl model 100 uh, sure. percent especially when they when they did nil that's yes. the nil nil thing that thing yeah. just changed the whole thing so yeah. now it's they're gonna have to go to a salary cap it's gonna have to be mandated and here's the bottom line in college football in college football they're still gonna cheat <laughs> <laughs> they're, yeah, just, it, they're just gonna cheat it's gonna be a, <laughs> that's just the way it is Fantastic. I just assume that. So I, I just, you know, I add that into all the fray of preparing <laughs> yeah, for a game, preparing for recruiting. It's just like accepted. You yeah, know, that's it's like if I'm playing my mom in chess and I look know. away and she moves the piece. Right. Oh, I knew what happened. What you am know, I going to exactly. do about it? You you know? Know? That just <laughs> for myself, for myself, I'm going to keep it clean. You know, for myself, that's just well, you have to. For me, that's how I roll. If I'm a coach or a scout, I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to do it the way it's supposed to be done. I was raised a certain way. That's me. But for other everybody out there, I don't know. You know, I don't know everybody. Now, so. having said that, you're yeah. going to keep it clean. But there are guys who are not going to keep oh, it clean. Oh, 100%. And, and they're on you're your right. team, right? You already know that. Well, you understand that. If I figure, if I find them out, we're going to have a conversation. They're everywhere. Well, yeah, you have yeah, to. They're True. everywhere. True. Exactly. True. Yeah. That's my point. You and know. so and we were trying to do this back in the 70s. I, so. I can believe that. I can believe that. <laughs> Nothing's new. Nope. Yeah. No, nothing new under the sun. I think that's written someplace in the good book. Yeah. So my question for you, because we've talked about Penn State, USC, which non-Ohio State Michigan team in the Big Ten is best suited to make a run at the Big Ten title? To make a big to make a run? Yeah. And so yeah, we have to define what the run will be for. Big Ten championship game. So the Big Ten championship game, there's not very many out. In fact, I don't think there's any outside of that. There is going to be, there's going to be a group that's going to have a, a good year. They're going to have, yeah, and they're right. going to threaten somebody from not getting there, right? Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a, there's going to be a Nebraska, uh, uh, Ohio State game that's coming down to the end, and it's a great game, right? You're, we're going to get mm-hmm. that. We get that every year, um, but so before, in, instead of um, Ohio State, and really, it's still Ohio State, and Michigan. What do you think of Oregon? Oregon is the interesting one for me. I want to see how far they're able to go. I want to see them, if they get pounded early, uh, how how that takes effect later on in the season, especially when it starts to get cold out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I talk about cold, but as a player, you don't even think about no. it. But, you know, it, it sometimes it makes a difference and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it just like for USC, UCLA, it just becomes a little bit more frequent on the on the schedule. Yeah. You know, and so when, in terms of November, December hits, uh, I say no more November. They don't play in bowl games December. So November, October hits. Right. That's when they got to, you know, game plan. You know, they got to come to Wisconsin or they got to go to Indiana. Check the, you know, forecast just to make sure, okay, and this even, might be a run heavy here, game. Here's the game. thing. So even even if it isn't a factor, Correct. the fact that you got ready for it and talked about it, it becomes a factor. Right. And it then becomes you, you're, you're well more prepared for it. Because right. if you don't prepare for it, oh, right. zero degrees with a, you know, wind chill of 30 or 20. That's a problem yeah. when I mean, you got a whole bunch of California kids that mm-hmm. don't know the mindset of what they got to get ready it's for. Go- it's it, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's top of the hour. So more coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
More we'll, <laughs> we'll throw it a break and let Matthew Millen go be Matthew Millen. Uh, and, and we appreciate you so much. Always yeah. good to see you. You know what a big fan I am. I'm grateful for you. Uh, I'm appreciative of you. Um, Matt Millen. And I, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you, kind sir. We'll throw it a break. See you guys. Yeah, More from Big Ten.